Well, as David Hunt of PGM just told us, a lot of his clients are allocating money to private equity. Brian Sazi, it's kind of ironic then what private equity is doing with that money. Yeah, they are, they are definitely starting to put it to work, Julian. Some new, fun, interesting data out of the folks at S&P Global Market Intelligence caught my eyes uh, this morning, noting how much cash, or as, the, as it's commonly called, dry powder, that is capital committed uh, to private equity firms and has not been used yet. So 25 private equity firms held 500, or currently hold $509.8 billion of this dry powder, essentially money they could be putting to work soon, or at least before you're in, potentially, uh, on potential acquisitions. Number one on this list, uh, Blackstone with $43.2 billion, KKR at close second at $42.8 billion. Uh, and to your point, yes, P has been putting a lot of money to work so far this year. First six months of the year, P has spent $500 billion to do deals. Uh, more than 6,300 deals were announced in the first half of this year. That's according to data uh, from Refinitiv. And really, the biggest deal so far has been Medline. Uh, Medline is a, 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 a seller of supplies to hospitals, if I can get it out there. Uh, that was a $34 billion deal uh, announced in June. Carlisle uh, and Blackstone were the leaders uh, in that deal. But again, you do get the sense, given the, that the amount of dry power these companies do have, we could be seeing some pretty large, significant headline-grabbing deals from the PE space into your into your end. They have to put this money to use. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, they it, it it's kind of this is like the big boy version of the SPACs, though, right? They have to put the money to use. I mean, they they don't have to. They could return the money to their LPs um, after you know certain periods pass. Now they're they're certainly incentivized to put the money to work. But I think you run the numbers here, Sazi, and I'm looking you know, at this story from S&P hit the inbox yesterday. So $510 billion, right, is out there. And it, it gets to a similar conversation with the SPAC, which is, is that, like, is that, does the math even make it work, right? So, okay, you can have one PE deal. Let's say somehow you get to a, an $80 billion PE deal, which by the way, is an amount, isn't the amount of capital that the PE shops would deploy, right? They have 510 billion to deploy. Of course, that's gonna be leveraged as part of a deal. So really, we're talking about 500 billion times 10, times 12, based on the multiple trillions of dollars of value. Love that it. Could be Love deployed. It. Yeah, but that it, the math doesn't work. They're not gonna, <laughs> these companies aren't gonna come together to buy Apple or, or buy all the fangs, which are about $5 trillion of market cap, right? There's there's not enough money, there's not enough targets out there, in my opinion, for this capital to ultimately get deployed. It's the same thing with the SPACs. There's too much money in these vehicles and not enough companies that are viable to be taken public at this point in their life cycle. Now, uh, there are some other things that you could do with that capital. You don't necessarily only have to buy out you know, companies. It's not 100% buyout funds, but again, doing some very rough math, I, I think, while the dry powder conversation is now going on, what do you think, guys, year seven? We're doing year eight of how much dry powder is out there? We, we still have you know, barely eclipsed the TXU deal from 2007, and so I'm just starting to, to look at it, and just the math just isn't, I'm just not getting there in terms of there being enough well, targets for all this capital to be deployed. Well, you're right. I, I don't think Blackstone is going to go out and, and offer $5 trillion for Apple. You know, the, bigger, <laughs> the, bigger, the bigger takeaway here, they I, should, I think, though. is- they should. It, maybe they should, but I think the bigger takeaway is here, could we see more really large, sizable deals like a Medline? That is a $34 billion acquisition of a very attractive company. Could we see more $50 billion deals? Sure. I think that the one the other takeaway is that you're going to see more deals into your end. Will you see, will you see another 6,300 deals like we saw in the first half? Maybe not, but 5,000 uh, deals, that, that's a lot of deals. That puts overall deals, uh, what, over 10,000 from the PE shops alone this year? That's, that's impressive stuff. Well, and like with the SPACs, because of this law of large numbers, if you're going to see a lot of deals, some of them are not going to be so great. I think that's the conclusion here. There may be, you know, you have all this money you got to put to work. Maybe you don't always make the best decisions with it, which we'll see how that works out for some of these PE investors.